Say unto them, Thus said the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. Right. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, said the Lord. It's going to be done. All right? It's going to be done. And all the things that were prophesied were done. Lord, read, read the Habakkuk. <laughs> Habakkuk 2 and 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that, it may, that he may run that readeth it. Right. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and lie not, and, and, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will not tarry. All right? It will not tarry. Okay? It's going to surely come to pass. All these things that, that we're prophesying are going to come to pass. All right? Uh, you got that? This is 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, but yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And these people are not ready for the day of the Lord because they're not watching. Go ahead. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then shall sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in, are not in darkness that that day shall overthink you as right. a thief. So we know the thief is coming, so we're actually we'll stay up, we got the lights on, we got maybe there's a shotgun. You understand? This is what we're doing spiritually. But they're not, they're like they're sleeping. All right, go ahead. Verse five, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness, Therefore, let us not let let us not sleep as the others, but let us watch and be sober. Right, we're, we're spiritually awake. The light represents the truth. We know the truth. All right. They don't know it. They're in darkness. All right. They grope in darkness as in noonday. Uh, uh, right. In the noonday, they grope as in the night. You see that? What you got, brother? It's the book of St. Luke, chapter twelve, and verse thirty-seven. Blessed are those servants whom the Salakia. Whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. You know, find, those are the ones that are going to be blessed and delivered. You know what's going on. Who's watching. Who's actually doing the work of the Lord. Okay? Which really represents doing the work. All right? Coming out here prophesying, preaching. Making your body a living sacrifice. Okay? This is what it's all about. That's what the Lord did. That's what the disciples did. What you got, bro? This is the book of St. Matthew 25 and verse 13. Watch therefore... For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Yep. And we're watching. Oh, I've set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. We are the watchmen. The prophets of the Lord are the watchmen. That's right. Those are the ones he gave his word to. Let me aim those three and seven. Those are the ones he gave his word to. All right? His secrets to. So we can break down the secrets. So people don't understand. What does this mean? That it means such and such and such. This is going to happen. This is what's going to happen. This is what happened back then. This is what's going to happen now. What? Amos 3 and verse 7 Surely the Lord power will do nothing But he revealeth his secrets Unto his servants the prophets Showing you that we're the prophets The word prophet means to say before And all we're doing is saying what's going to happen before it comes And the ones that listen and take heed And worship Yahweh by Shem Shai They're going to be protected from the said judgment The said evil Alright because believe me They have not seen nothing yet Believe me the way it's going to get, you're going to think it's a horror movie. Go ahead, brother. It's the book of Isaiah 42 and verse 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Right, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. All right? We've been telling you it was going to be a lockdown. Before there was a lockdown, all of a sudden, 2020, bang, a lockdown. Right? And you know what? The, the viewers, the viewership of our videos increased. The viewership of brother the apostles increased. Why? Because they're starting to see the truth. Alright? Right? Isaiah 62 and verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. We are those watchmen on the wall that were never that were not holding their peace. Alright, go ahead. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep the silence and give him no rest to establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That's it. All right. So you, should, you know by what? You know by, the, by us pushing this word out. 
you can't, no one can say they didn't hear the truth. All right, the truth is on every every major city right now, really, even the minor cities. Okay, pretty much. All right, what you got, and, and by the way, you got the YouTube. So I guarantee the Spirit of the Lord guided these people to the YouTube, man. All right? Go ahead, brother. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 11. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, yeah. we persuade men. Let me show you something about the terror of the Lord. All right? There was there was a there's a there's a video where the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where they're, they're riding in Brazil. I don't know if you've seen that. And then that whole mountain fell on that on the, on that boat. The whole side of the mountain fell. That was the terror of the Lord. That's the Lord who set that up. Okay? Oh, the life and death is in the power of the Lord. The Lord has control of that. They say, oh, Satan killed my baby. No, Satan didn't kill nobody. Satan was commissioned by the Lord. Satan is under control. You understand what I'm saying to you, brother? There was a kid that was on the, the ride, right? The ride came, the ride broke, and the kid fell from the ride. The slingshot ride. That was the Lord. The angel unscrewed that. You have to understand that. You know, I'm not saying he had an actual, but the angel set that up. All right? Because that's the judgment. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Yep. See now that I, even I, am he, yep. and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I kill. The Lord kills and makes alive, man. Go ahead. I wound and I heal. Uh -huh. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. And if the Lord is against you, no one could deliver out of your hand. That's why we said that Mark, it doesn't even make sense. It's not even logical to take that. You understand what I'm saying to you? And if the Lord is against you, you got angels you can't see setting you up for the, for the a great judgment. Go ahead. Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 and verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's one thing. Well, he was known in the ancient world, it says, uh, as Alashadja in the Hebrew, which means demon like power. The Heavenly Father was known as demon like because he, the terrors he would bring, man. You know the plagues he put in Egypt, man? He put darkness, meaning what? They, all of a sudden it was day and it just turned dark, pitch black, and he made uh, apparitions pop, like they heard noises of beasts around them, different things, man, screams. You see? Why? Because the Lord is, is he knows how to terrorize people. He brought, he brought, uh, he, oh, he killed all the firstborn. Oh, the flood. That, how horrific could that be? Right? You can't escape and it's just rain pouring from and he said that he took the rain, he opened the heavens, because there's water in outer space. He opened the heavens and he opened he brought the water from under. So that's terror for you. That's terror. You understand what I'm saying to you? So hey, how, this is gonna be way greater and way more terrifying what's coming up than all of that. This is the grand finale of terror. Go ahead, brother. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Yeah. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And that time has not come yet. That time has not come yet. That's around the time where Satan shall fight against Michael and his angels. All right? Meaning what? When the angels come back, guess what? They, they, you, know, you know America, they set up a space force, a space army. Why did they do that? Because guess what? They know more than these average people. They know what we're seeing is the truth. And they know, they see the chariots. There's videos, as a matter of fact, they released it from the Pentagon, the videos of the actual chariots. That this is what they call UFOs. And they're playing with them. And they, and they, can't, t they can't touch a UFO because it's too fast. As a matter of fact, they try to shoot at it. That's really the pride of these devils. How stupid are you? You don't know what it is. It's the chariots of the Lord. But it was just playing with it. But guess what? The chariots are going to come with the Lord and they're going to destroy this, this kingdom. Go ahead. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. All the ones that are written in the book of life, all the ones that are of the elect of our people, the Israelites now, are going to be, are going to be delivered. But the ones that are not written in the book of life, they're going to be destroyed with the Edomites. He's going to treat them like a, like a heathen. Are you not like unto the children of Ethiopia unto me? All right. What you got, brother? Right. Got it? Boy. This is Isaiah 66 and verse 15. Ooh. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebukes with flame of fire. Right. For by fire and what by chariots? his... chariots. He's coming with them chariots. 
go ahead, the thousands of heaven, as the scriptures say, go ahead. For by fire and by the sword will the Lord bleed with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Right, the scriptures say from the east to the west shall the slain of the Lord be. He's going to be killing people. As soon as the Lord comes, he's going to be bringing death and destruction. All right? As a matter of fact, they're going to, it's going to be coming in the midst of World War III. That's how we know we're at the end. Oh, get me that woe and the third coming quickly. Okay? The World War III is the war to end all wars. All right? You have to understand that. Go ahead. Uh, Revelation 11 and verse 14. The second woe is past. Yes. And behold, the third woe cometh The woe represents me. war. The second woe was passed, and actually the prophecy was that was that uh, Revelation nine, 11, 11. Re Revelation eleven, no Revelation nine, I think, with the prophecy of World War Two, yeah. and it describes the, 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 the airplanes yeah, yeah. as that looked like locusts and it had a you know, tail that could, that could shoot. Speaking about the person in the cockpit, listen, man, this book is this book is high level knowledge, man. All right, this is high. I don't know if it was Theodore Roosevelt that said the Bible is the highest education you can get, even better than a college education. Um, go ahead, brother. This is Revelation 6 and verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name, so like, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the, the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Well, that's it. Well, see, all these oh, I, uh, uh, put four kinds. Yeah. Let me that. All right, so the Lord has all type of setups for judgment. You got the beast of the earth. I don't know if you, there's uh, one chick, she, was, she used to be a dog sitter, and the two dogs just out of nowhere, the dog just attacked her, bit off her whole face. Now she don't have no face. Okay, and she's walking around with no face. All right, why? Because the Lord set, put in the dog's spirit, uh, they'll, they'll go and uh, bite this chick. All right, that's all judgment. You have to understand it. And if people say, why me, God? Well, what are they doing for the most high? What, are they, what do these people think about the Heavenly Father in their daily life? Absolutely not. They just go living, just do what they do. And all they do, what are they doing? A whole bunch of wickedness. All right? Go ahead, man. This is Jeremiah 15 and verse 2. And it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then shall they tell them, Thus saith the Lord, such as are for death to death, yep. such as are for the sword to the sword. Why is he going to say that? Because there's a time where, where there's no door of mercy. The door of mercy really is right now, right? You see the prophets out here? The time of mercy is now. The Lord is opening his arms to you now. But there's going to be a time where the Lord is going to close up his arms. And you can't come back at that time. Nobody could come back at that time. No one could come to try to see the Lord at that time. Because the Lord is basically closed. Business is closed. Go ahead. And such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity. Oh, famine. Let's not forget about famine. There's going to be a famine coming. All right? You see, the, see things getting empty? A famine is coming. That's the prophecy. That's right. Oh, the cannibalism is coming back. That's part of the prophecies, too. That's right. so this is going to be the final judgment. All right? And the only ones of our people, the ones, the elect of our people are going to be delivered. All these other nations don't have a chance. At least you got a chance. At least you're an Israelite. All right? So I plan on using my chance. Oh, the scriptures say, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. So if you keep this word until the end, you, you do his work until the end, you are the elect. And that's a promise from y'all by Shemuel That's right. Go ahead. And such as are for the captivity to the captivity. Some are going to be put to the concentration camps. Go ahead. And I will appoint over them for a kind, said yep. the Lord. The sword to slay, yep. the oh, dust. That, that represents the gun, the knife. The, people are going to have all kind of weapons. Kicking in people's board. Give me a second as a 15th chapter. Go ahead. And the dogs to tear, uh -huh. and the fowls of heaven, and the beasts of the earth to devour and to destroy. Yeah, you're going to have wild animals coming out, man. All right? Because guess what? Listen, listen, the Lord is the master chess player. Let me show you something, brother. All right? All these lockdowns. You know what happens with the lockdowns? Animals migrate, man. They said, yo, how come I don't hear no noise coming? And the animals migrate, bro. Wolves will end up in these cities. You know what I'm saying to you? This is how the Lord sets things up, man. Oh, that's why we had to, when we were taking the land from the Canaanites, we had to take them out little by little. He took them out only within a year. We could have just killed them all. We had to take them out little by little. Why? Because he said the beast would overtake the field, overtake the city. So these people don't know about the, the setup. All right? Well, you got something? 
Uh, second Ezra 9 and 11. And they that have loaded my law, yep. while they had yet liberty, and when as yet a place of repentance was open unto them. A place of repentance is open unto them. All right, go ahead. The Israelites, go ahead. Understood not, but despised they it. Despise, uh, whatever, I don't want to hear that. Go ahead. The same must know, must know it. Oh, I'm, wait, wait for the bus to pass. Okay, read, 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 read. Go ahead, read up a bit. The same must know it after death by pain. The same that did not listen to the, the, the come when the door of repentance was open. You're going to have to know it after death by pain. You get judged. All right? So all these people you see walking, you don't want to be like these guys. Right? Lest they be of the, the elect and they turn back. You know, that happens sometimes. They might hear it and they might walk and go home but then they, you know, they'll think about it and they'll come back and they'll get the truth. You don't want to you don't want to be like the ones that say, I F that. Because they, <laughs> they won't see Okay, they go see. Let me Proverbs 1 and 20. Alright? What you got, brother? What you got? Proverbs? Yeah, go ahead. Know, okay, go ahead. Second uh, Ezra 7 and 43. Yep. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time, and the beginning of the immortality for to come, wherein corruption is past. Verse 45. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him. They had gotten the victory. Well, he called it the day of doom. That doesn't sound good. The day of doom. Go ahead. Go, that, that's it. That's it. No, read that again. Read Go. that again. The day of doom. Go, Go ahead. Uh, second Ezra 7 and 43. But the day of doom uh -oh. shall Go be ahead. the end of this time. The end of this. See, we're, 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 we're coming into the end of the Gentiles' rulership. And we're coming into our rulership. Start with Yahweh Shai, our Lord. That's the kingdom of heaven. And that's going to be forever. Go ahead. And the beginning of the immortality oh, for to come. Know, that's the kingdom of heaven. Immortality. And that's for us. That's for the Israelites. Go ahead. Wherein corruption is past. Yep. Verse 45. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that had gotten the victory. Yep. Yep. Well, that's it. Because we're going we're 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 to be. Don't, don't listen. They're going to go down. We're going to go up. Point right. blank period. What you got? Proverbs 1 and verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of conquerors and the openings of the gates and the city. She uttereth the word saying, how? Why does it say wisdom crieth in the streets? Because every time the prophets came out, they came in the streets and they were, they were screaming just like our wisdom. They were speaking with a loud voice. Every time, all throughout history. Go ahead. Saying, how long ye simple ones Will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. How is he making word known his words unto you through his prophets, through his men? You see, a lot of people, they have to be so arrogant, they think the Lord is going to come speak to them personally. They go knock on your door, yo, this is the Heavenly Father. No, he's not, he's not coming to you. First of all, you're too impure to perhaps the, the, the heavenly father speak to you directly okay the lord, the lord is going to use men to speak to you man go ahead uh, hebrews 1 and verse 1 the most high who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak in times past unto the fathers by the prophets oh, by who? who how did he speak to to the, to the to our fathers through the prophets man he always used men to speak to other men to teach them Okay, he didn't come by, you know, down in the cloud, all right, and say, oh, this is the heavenly father. No, no. <laughs> first of all, Moses is the only one he spoke to like that in the first place. Okay, everyone else, he had, to go, he had to go through men, a mediator. Go ahead. Come back to Proverbs 1 and verse 23. 23 Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. How is he making his words known? Through his prophets. Go ahead. Because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. And this is the Lord stretching out his hand now. He's letting you know what he, what he thinks, what he feels. He's letting you know what, what his judgments are, man. All right? Through his men. Go ahead. But ye have set I not on my counsel. You went like this. Go ahead. And with none of my reproof, mm -hmm. I will also laugh at your calamity. So when you get judgment, he's going to laugh at you. And we're going to laugh at you. Because we're the, look, we're, we're, the, we're on the Lord's side. We're on y'all by side. And that's we've right. been warned. Okay? So all this wickedness going on, and when judgment comes, that's from the Lord. We read it to you earlier um, uh, that uh, that the Lord is the one that kills and makes alive. That's all judgment. 
Let me show there be evil in the city. Give me Amos 3 and 6. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? The answer is no. When, when, when the flood came, the Lord did the flood. That was a gruesome death, but the Lord did it. All right? When, the, when, when these uh, uh, slavery happened, that was the Lord who did that. Believe it or not. But that was the judgment of our people. Okay? That was the judgment of our people. All right? And some, some of our people can't get with it. I, I can't believe in a God who did it. Bro, if you read, I understand why the Lord did that, man. If you read how, if you see, bro, look at our people, how rebellious they are. And, and when you read the scriptures, all they were doing was rebelling. The Lord was helping them, and all they were doing was rebelling. Give me that, give me that dealing with the garden. Like, what more can be done? All right? Listen, man, the Lord is a just power, and he shows so much mercy unto our people. First of all, he's still going to give them the kingdom, even after all their wickedness, man. All right? Moses went to go get the laws. He just delivered them. He just, he just split the sea. You just seen the sea split, and you walked on dry ground, and you seen fire destroy your enemies, and they, he deliver you, right? And, you're, and they're murmuring, talking, ah, what, 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 the Lord brought us here to die? No. If you give your son everything, right? And then, and then he's talking, you give him a plate, you give him all this, you set him up, you have all, you know, you give him everything he wants, you buy him a new car. He's like, ah, ah why, why, uh, you expect me to, to eat uh, uh, this, this roasted chicken? Uh, what do you want me to do? Bro, this guy's still complaining? You're going to want to take everything that he has from him, right? Go ahead, read that with, with that scripture I asked for the garden. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse, and verse 5. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. And no, no, shall... no, no, no. Go, go, go up to the beginning. The beginning? Oh, come. The book of Isaiah 5 and 1. Now will I sing to my well beloved the song of my beloved touching his vineyard. Right. My vineyard. My the vineyard is us. The vineyard represents the Israelites. Okay, go ahead. My well beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it. Gathered out the stones thereof. Fenced it with the phone, uh-huh. And planted it with the choicest vine. He picked the choice vine, okay. And built a tower in the midst of it, okay. Uh-huh. And also made a wine press therein. Uh-huh. Made a wine press. In other words, he took care of that garden to the, to the utmost. Any, everything that you could do to a garden, he took care of it on that level. Go ahead. And he looked that it should bring for his grave on the walls of Jericho. That fell for, by the power of the Lord. The power of the Lord made the walls of Jericho fall, man. Okay? Consuming our enemies. Oh, he kept the sun up another day, an extra day, so that we could defeat our enemies, man. You understand what I'm saying to you? Go ahead. And he looked, God, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought, and it brought forth wild grapes. And instead of it bringing forth proper cultivated grapes, it brought wild grapes. He said, I did everything that I need to do. Right? I helped you. I did the, I, Oh, Manna from heaven. He actually brought manna from heaven. That happened. And you know they were still getting mad. I, I want meat. Right? Go ahead. It says, and now what and happens to and, and it said that the manna was 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 tailored to everyone's taste buds. It was actually tailored. So whatever you like, it, 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 everyone, it was good to everyone, in other words. Go ahead. It says. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Right. See who was wrong. Who was wrong? Me or the vineyard? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I did everything I needed to do for the vineyard. Who was wrong? I gave my son every, I bought him a Mercedes Benz at, at 15, right? Matter of fact, I picked him out some women. I taught him how to deal with women. All right? I gave him the top, you know, education, whatever, whatever. Whatever he wants to do, he can do it. I, oh, matter of fact, I put a, a million dollars in his bank account. And he's still complaining against me. He's still rebelling and doing against what I asked him to do. Go ahead. What could I have been done more to my vineyard that I've not done in it? Right. Wherefore, when I looked at it, it should bring forth grapes. It brought forth wild grapes. It brought forth wild grapes. Okay. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. The hedge is what? The protection. He says, so now he took the protection, and what happened? We got eaten up by all these other nations, our enemies, the heathen. Go ahead. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned, nor digged, 
but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. So in other words, he cursed it. He said, man, what the hell would you do? I'm going to take them, you know? And that's what happened to us as a nation. But the Lord is so merciful, guess what? <laughs> He's still going to give us the kingdom. He's still going to raise us up, oh, but the elect, the elect is going to be raised up, and he's going to he's going to give still give us the kingdom. So that all praises to Yahweh Okay, what you got, for, for the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. So see, it represents us, and the man of Judah, his pleasant plants. That's it. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, he wanted. Listen, the Lord wanted us to deal righteously with our own brethren. And what, what was, what was the, the heads of our people doing? Oppressing. What do you think the laws and statutes and commandments are about? It's about dealing righteously with your brother. Okay? That's what it's really about. That's why the scripture, the Lord said, um, uh, upon these two things hang all the law, to love the heavenly father with all thy heart and love thy brother as thyself. You see what I'm saying? That's what the law is all about. Okay? When, when, oh, it says that when you, let's say if I have an argument with a, a, a man of our nation, Right? Let's say me and this brother get into an argument or whatever, right? If he, if let's say he dropped something or he left his wallet or whatever, whatever, I, according to the law, I have to give it back to him. I have to find it and give it back to him. Or if, let's say his car is on the road and he can't start his car, but I know how to start his car, even if I don't like the guy, like if he's of my nation, I have to help him. That's just dealing with the, uh, the sheep, right? I have to help him. That's according to the law. You see what I'm saying too? So the law is all about loving your brother, man. Well, our people are doing the exact opposite. Because well, why? Because they're wicked. They're going off, man. But that's why the Lord is going to have to do a, a, a what, what you call an ethnic cleansing and take out the best out of the worst and, 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 and perfect them. Alright? Let me do the uh, Yeah, go ahead, brother. Uh, do you speak French by any chance? Yes, we do. We, we just have a French. Yeah, yeah. yeah the better uh, French. Be, but if any of you don't speak French, I don't mind speaking in English. Although it's not my first language, okay. I'll do my best to make myself... No problem, brother. No problem. Go ahead. So I got two questions. Sure. And uh, those questions are in relation to two passages of the Bible. Okay. But I would like uh, you guys to read out, sure. uh, out, sure. out loud, sure. if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, the first verse is in uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. Okay. Get your Revelation 9 and 4. Right. This is Revelation 9 and verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the earth, neither, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the power in their foreheads. Let me Ezekiel 9 and 4. Yep. Yep. Hold on. Go ahead. Yep. Here it's spoken about a seal yep. from the people of God. Yes, sir. But if you guys claim that the mark of the beast is a literal RFID chip, right. then what is the mark of of, or the seal of the spirit. We're going to show you. In, in Ezekiel 9 and 4. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. When you look up that word mark, that's a totally different meaning than the, the word mark in Revelation. Revelation is a, 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 the 13th chapter. That's a physical thing. Karagma is physical. That's the wah, which means a spiritual exemption from judgment. Okay, that's what that word actually But that's strange. If, if this is a spiritual mark, then why is your interpretation a, a different? Because they're the different words. You have to understand, this is the English, right? It was translated in English, right? So they use certain words in the English that might be the same, but it's not the same in the in the, in the original. You understand? Like the word world, there's three definitions for world. You understand? So when you read world in one part, it doesn't mean the same as world in another part. Okay, because world could mean uh, uh, the actual like a, a certain group, a segment, or world could mean the whole entire planet, or it could actually mean a, 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 an age, a time period, right? So you got eon, you got cosmos, you got point of minute, all right? So it's the same thing with that. They're two different words. This in the Hebrew would go back to the word kwai kwai, okay, which which actually deals with physicality. This is spiritual. Okay, go ahead. It says instead of mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right, the ones that are signing. In other words, they're not with the wickedness of the society. All right, so that's a spiritual mark. Go ahead. Go on. Right. It says, and to the others he said in my hearing that don't have the mark. Go ahead. Go ye after him through the city 
and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. That's what he's saying to the angels. So the ones that don't have that mark, go ahead and just destroy them. How you destroy them? All right? So that, that that's dealing with that. There's another one, I believe, in Revelation 9 saying, dealing with the actual with the war, saying, speaking about the seal of the Heavenly Father before him. Okay. Okay. What, what, you, what you got? What you got? This is uh, okay. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 12. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. I get it now. I get it. Good. If the map is this is a bit of chip, then if I have to go by by your same a train of thought, then the beast itself should be a literal beast, right? The beast should be a literal animal. No, no, it's not. It's not. I don't See, understand but, why but your interpretation here is, is is spiritual, but concerning the map, it's literal. No, because that 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 part is literal. That part is literal. All right, it is literal. Okay. Now dealing with like that's how the scripture is. The scripture jumps. From certain parts to certain parts. Certain parts might be spiritual and other parts is actually literal. That's how the scriptures is, right? You read Revelations 1, certain part might be a spiritual, but another part is actually literal. That's how that's how it, it operates, especially in the book of Revelations. But, but another reason, it says what? No man shall buy or sell, right? So in order for a man to be able to buy and sell with a particular mark, you have to build a system around that, right? You have to build a system. So what is the system being built for anything spiritual? Right? Oh, oh no, it's, 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 it's sin. Let's say it's, let's say it was sin. Okay, so how can I go and buy bread with sin? Oh, oh, I just committed adultery today. Can I buy that bread? It doesn't work. What they're building is a technocracy. They're built. They're setting up a cashless society. All right, where everything is based upon the internet of things. Yuval, you got to look up a guy named Yuval, Yuval Noah, uh, uh, Carl Clark Schwab. They speak about that, and they're the ones that are in the head of that of the of the world economic forum. Okay, they're, they're guiding the world to this. And they're telling you straight, we're doing away with the idea of God and we're moving towards this. All right, you have to understand that. So the system is being set up for it. So we see that. Okay, now this is how you're gonna be able to buy yourself. That ties into that. On top of that, karagma, like I told you, means it's something physical. It's some, it's a, it means something implanted, something, uh, something uh, an incision that's made. Physical, it's a physical word, okay? Go ahead. This is um, the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, and verse 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared right, so, and taken. Right, so we have to, we have to, we have to get, um, we have to get precept upon precept. But get me, get me, um... Get me, you know what it means, priest of property? You yeah. gotta get from this part, this part, that part. But get me where it says, um, uh, this broken reed, Egypt. Okay, the book of Isaiah, chapter 36, and verse 8. And it reads, Isaiah 36, and, and 6, lo. Thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed. Look up the scriptures where that word karagma comes up. Look at the blue letter. Look up the scriptures where the word karagma comes up. There's another one that, that where it comes up too uh, in the New Testament. Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, Isaiah 36 and 6. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt. On Egypt, which in modern day Egypt is America. Go ahead. Whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand right. and pierce it. Right. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that so when you trust into this system, right? Eventually you're gonna get pitted and it's set in your hand. In other words, you're gonna get stabbed in the back, but it was spiritual that it mentioned the hand. Trust in the system. Yep. But well, that's a spiritual interpretation. So in a what? sense that the beast from your point of view is the a beast, the beast. Sleep. No no the, the beast, no the beast itself, the actual beast. Get, get me revelation the Revelation the 13th chapter. We're gonna bring on the image of the beast is the system. The image of the beast. The, sin, the beast is something different. Image. The beast is the Roman, the, uh, the Roman Empire. That's going into the Roman Empire. Go ahead. Today, today is the modern day Roman Empire, which was, you know, consists of NATO and the EU. It speaks about the seven heads and the ten hordes. The modern day will be NATO and the EU. Okay. Go ahead. Revelation 13. Oh, give me that deadly wound was healed. Give me that. Revelation 13 and verse 15. 
and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. No, 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 go, go up, go up to like, uh, we'll start, start from the beginning, start from one. Okay. Revelation 13 and verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his, so like, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Right, right. Those, those, those seven uh, heads is dealing with those uh, those vassal states. Okay, so you got you got the Roman, you got the Greeks, you got what Germania major, Germania minor, right, so on and so forth. Okay, those are the seven heads, and then the ten horns will represent uh, the, the the NATO. Okay, go ahead. Verse two, and the, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. That's NATO. Go ahead. Verse two, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the and the dragon gave his gave him his power. Oh, and, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Read that part again. Read that part again. So like, verse two, and the beast which I saw was, was like unto a leopard. What is that speaking about? When you go into Daniel, it speaks about the leopard. That represents the Greeks, okay? That represents the Greeks, because who was the beginning of these Edomites rulership? The Greeks. That's why they say civilization starts with the Greeks, but it doesn't, because the Babylonians had an empire, the Persians had an empire, the Egyptians had an empire, but they, they that's really a racist statement, all right? When they say, oh, it started with the Greeks, because there's been civilizations from before that. You see what I'm saying to you? Go ahead. And his feet, well, as the feet of a bear. Bear represents Russia. Okay, so the, the, the leopard represents Alexander. And by the way, it's spiritual because Alexander wore a leopard, uh, a, le a leopard uh, thing over his. And he probably wore that because he knew he, he met with the priest. And he knew about this prophecy, about the prophecy in Daniel. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and his and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him gave him his power. Right, and England, go ahead. And his seat and, and great authority. Yeah. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. Right, I told you one of the heads was Rome, right? The Roman Empire. So one of those heads was wounded to death. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. And it was healed. All right? So you have to understand. Sometimes it speaks it as an actual head, and sometimes it speaks it as an actual beast. All right? And it, it, listen, it, the head was, it was wounded, meaning what? It fell. When did it fell? Get, get those those images up there. No, let, let Zabat get that because because Zakar's getting them from scriptures right now. Get those those new those images. The, the Byzantine Empire, the Byzantine Empire images. Okay, you have to understand the Roman Empire fell. All right, by by uh, meaning the, the Edomites that were ruling at first. The first was so-called white people. Then what happened was the so-called black people got up in here and they started ruling. Like after Septimius and Verus, there was someone before him. I don't remember who that. Uh, what's that? The, the man's name who ruled first. The first. Uh, black Emperor? Nerva. Nerva, all right? You see what I'm saying to you? And that was considered the fall, that was considered the fall of the Roman Empire. Okay, so when you get these images, excuse me, this was when we were starting to come back into power, uh, come into power, okay? So what happened was they fell and we came into power. As you can see here, you got the kings, and this is a very, these are very, very old images, man. You see the kings, the so-called black kings, and you see the, the Edomites they're fighting against, and these are known as, as the wild men back then. All right, so you have to understand they went down. Get me, get me uh, Revelation the twentieth chapter real quick, brother. Just go hold that. Oh, so you're holding that. You're good. Yeah, get yeah, me yeah. Revelation the twentieth chapter. Brother. This is uh, Revelation twenty and one. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, yep. having the key of the bottomless pit. The and bottomless it, pit is, is Europe because it lacks. Um, uh, 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 how do you say this? Uh, agricultural power, right? They don't grow much. They have to export a lot, okay? Or import a lot. Too. Go ahead. And it says, and a great chain in his hand. Yep. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. See, remember we told you the Edomites are the devil? We laid hold of the old serpent going back to the garden because that wasn't an actual serpent that spoke to eat. That's a whole other story. But that was an actual man with the spirit of a serpent, okay? Go ahead. And Satan. And bound him a thousand years. What does it mean? That means that he could not, he was not ruling for a thousand years. That's where you get the Byzantine Empire, the Dark Ages. Okay? Because he was not ruling for a thousand years. We were ruling for a thousand years. And when did he come back into power? The Renaissance. Renaissance means what? Rebirth. That's right. That's when Esau came back. And what did he do? He came and conquered on this side, he conquered on that. You see what I'm saying? And what did he do? They also brought deception. They painted up their images, they put up white, whitewashed images. Okay, now, now hold on. 
Oh, okay, go ahead. It says, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And shut him up. See, so now we have a chain on us. We have a spiritual chain, our people. Because we can't get up right now. You see what I'm saying to you? But guess what? That chain is going to be taken off. All right? Go it's, ahead. And set a seal upon him yep. that he should deceive the nations no more. Right, because whenever Esau came into power, <laughs> he deceived the nations. <clears throat> All right? Now, what do you have there? What do you mean? Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Okay, so like it. What? And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And he was loosed around the 1300s. That's when they started to come into power again. All right? They, basically, our people allowed them to marry with, each, with us and whatever. And, and they, they came up into power. They ended up getting up into power. Okay? And what happened was, eventually, we went into slavery. We went into the 1600s. You know where the first slave ships were? Where it first came from? It didn't come from West Africa. It came from Portugal and Spain. Dealing with the Moorish Empire, all right, which was the same as the Saxons and the, 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 all the same people. That was nothing but a big gang. But basically, it was a big gang war. Okay, you have to understand that. All right. Um, what were you reading? We're talking about our people. So yeah. the way you guys understand is that our people, the Israelites, are people who have black skin. It, it, it's, not, it's not about. Yeah, originally yes. Originally yes. The Israelites have have a dark skin. But it's not about the skin color that makes them Israelites. That's not what makes them Israelites. But that's yes, the image that kind of comes across when yes, you guys... Yes, yeah, that, well, that is... That, it so is... a white person will feel like kind of excluded because they, now they, it's them that the people of Israel as being black people. But and then a white person who hears that, see that. I'm but, out, but that's I'm out okay. of this. But that's okay. That's okay because guess what? The elect, the ones that are of the elect... You have to, let's, let me explain something to you. There's no such thing as white and black people. We have to say that because people don't understand it. That's what they know themselves as. What do you call yourself? A black person. What do they call themselves? They call themselves white people. That does not exist. That was created exactly. in 1681. You have exactly. to understand this, okay? But I'm going to explain this. It is about nations, all right? The Lord came for the nation of Israel, all right? And the nation of Israel, um, the, the prototypical look is a so-called dark-skinned person, okay? With woolly hair, and you've got other... Israelites that don't have wool here, but it always, they had melanin, they had dark skin, okay? Now, let's deal with this, all right? The Edomites predominantly are so-called white people, predominantly, but we have people that are so, that are, do look like so-called white people, that are actually our people, okay? So it's not about the skin color, that's not what makes you, that's a new concept, but we have to say that so that you understand, okay, the truth of the matter. You, you, you see where I'm coming from? It's really Israelites and Edomites and other nations, okay? Because I'll give you an example. Blake Griffin, his son has blonde hair and blue eyes, but his father's a, a Haitian. You understand that? It goes through the seed of the father. So what does that make his son? It makes his son a, a Levite, an Israelite, one of our people. It doesn't matter how he looks. You, you know, does that make sense to you? So you see what I'm saying? So that whole concept is throws everything off. So you have to understand this. The Edomites were taken down at that time. They used to rule the, 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 the Roman Empire. But then our people came up with the power, okay? Within within their rulership. And then we came with the power. That was the fall. Read that again where it said the deadly being was healed. Come. This is Revelation 13. Now understand now. Think of Edomites and Israelites. Israelites and Edomites. Don't think of white and black so you can understand. Okay, who they are predominantly today. Go ahead. Revelation 13 and verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded unto death, and his deadly wound was healed. He, he was wounded unto death. In other words, they went down like we read in Revelation the 20th chapter. Read that again. Read that again, please. Right, Revelation the 20th chapter. We read about how he was put into the bottomless pit and he was shut up for a thousand years. That was that wound being put on him. Okay? But then what happened, they came up with the power the same way we came up with the power. They basically they intermarried with us and they came up into the royal the royal line, all right? Because the one that's called herself the queen, she's not truly of the royal line that was there before. You have to understand that. Read that. Revelation 20 and 3, and cast him up into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Right, because the Edomites are known as the, the wicked nation. Okay, so they could not deceive at that point. All right, they were shut up because they wanted to, uh, this image. Give me this, give me this, brother, at the bottom of the water. These are the kings. The kings were so-called black here, brother. This is a old, this is going back to like what, the, the, the 1100s, all right? This is pre-Renaissance art, okay? If, when you go to Eastern Europe, you'll see dark images. When you go to the Roman Catholic Church, you'll see dark images, afros and all that. You have to understand that. 
Have you heard you make of those so-called Israelites no. in Palestine right now? The Palestine? Yeah. Those, 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 those are not the true Israel. the, the Israelis the are not the true Israelites. But the countries, you know, heritage, right? No, they can't, brother. That the, the DNA is false. DNA, that DNA test, is, if you DNA test a dog, guess what? They'll give you results. And they'll give you different results <laughs> if you DNA test anything else. That thing is a, that was a scam, brother. That's the deceiving. Oh, hold on. He was not able to deceive until the thousand years was up. That's part the of the deception. Question, <laughs> if I ask them the same question, it will be telling you exactly what you're well, telling okay. Well, that's okay. Well, that's okay. They're saying the truth. Well, 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 you, well that's up to you to find out. That's up to you to, to reveal. That's not up to me to tell I can tell you, yeah, this is the truth, but it's up to you to believe if you believe the truth or not. In my opinion, I think that both of your groups are all missing the point. Because okay. there's this passage of, uh, of scripture, if you don't mind. And I'm going to end on that note. It's in the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let, hold on. Let me, let me, before you get that, I'm going to let you get that. I'm going to let you get that. Because if you don't get it, it's not. I can't quote, I can't make you get it. But I'm just saying this. You understand the difference between Edomite and Israelite and yes. what we mean by the deadly wound was healed and he came back into power after. Right? Yeah. The, right. So that's what it means. We're dealing with the Renaissance period. Renaissance means what? Rebirth. Okay? Go ahead. What, what do you say? Chris? Romans, chapter 2. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. I don't have it here on my phone. So I would very much like it, but for, for us, I can open it here. Okay, and tell, and tell me what your point is dealing with this description. When I'm going to read it, you will see what I'm trying to, uh, the point I'm trying to bring out. Verse 28, I'm reading the KGB version. Go ahead. It says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the head. But you only have hold on. You're right, but you only have half of the story. Okay? It's not, it's not it we have Israelites, right? We have people on this side, for example, walking all over here. They're not doing what we're doing. They don't believe in what we believe. Even you say you don't believe. So you're not an Israelite inwardly, although you might be one physically. You understand that? You go from you're you're on the shot, you're an Israelite. I can see it, I can see how you talk, you're an Israelite, but you don't you're not one inwardly. Okay? We have been washed through the word and we're one inwardly as well as outward. You understand that? What so you word? have to be one, hold on, you have to be one physically before you're one inward. Read Romans 9, brother. Romans 9 and verse 7. Start at verse 1, start at verse 2. Cons. Verse 2, that, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. This is Paul speaking, by the way. Go ahead. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Yahweh Shai for my brethren. And the word there is Christ. Read it, read it verbatim. Okay, read it verbatim. But Rome, his real name is Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Come. Romans 9 and verse 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ mm -hmm. for my brethren, my kinsmen. Who, did he say for all nations? He said for his brethren. He wished that he could have went on the cross for, for the Lord for his brethren. Go ahead. My kinsmen according to the flesh. According to the flesh. Not according to the spirit. Although... <laughs> Although, this, like I said, there's one that's one uh, uh, Israelite outwardly, but not inwardly. But uh, you have to be outwardly before you can be inwardly. Go ahead. Verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? So what's the adoption? What's the adoption, brother? You know the adoption is going to the Bible? Yes. What is it? It's, I mean, it's all the promises that God gave to his people, a true Abraham. No, the, no, the adoption is the, the Lord adopted the, the Israelites back because we fell off. We read in Hosea earlier that the Lord cast off the Israelites, okay? But now through Yahweh Shai, he's bringing them back, okay? Bringing, the, bringing them back to him, go ahead. That's the adoption, go ahead. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory? The glory is what? The kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And the covenants. The covenants. The first and second covenant. The second one is directly dealing with the kingdom of heaven. The first one is dealing with the laws that was given to Moses. You understand that? So that that's showing you right there that this is only the sap salvation is only dealing with the Israelites. That right there. Go ahead. And the giving of the law and the service of God and the and the promises. Yeah. And the promises. Go ahead. Whose, whose are the fathers, and of whom 
as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Right. Who is over all according to the flesh? Now, it's not about, like I said, it's not about skin color, but it's about you being an Israelite. Like we made the example of uh, of Blake Griffin. We could give you other examples through the spirit who we know are Israelites. <laughs> that you will be like, what, what, what? You wouldn't understand it because you might, you might, you're not on that spiritual level. Okay? I'll give you uh, Conor McGregor. He's a, he's one of, he's an Israelite. Okay? Just the way he, he acts, the way he talks. He's an Israelite. Uh, who else? Brady. Huh? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah. You see, you always say Tom Brady. That's debatable. All right? That's debatable. But, 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 but you know what? He, you know, he, did, he did with the last one, so he might. All right? You got, um, oh, 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 the, Donnie, who's that guy, the MVP of the Dallas Mavericks? That's an Israelite. That's an that's Israelite. The Wix King, uh, 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 not third one, the new one, the new one. No, no, Luka, 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 Luka. That's a, that's a Jake, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right? Oh, so, oh, what, white chocolate, who's that, who's that one? Uh, and one, oh. that's an Israel. You see, you have to have the, the spirit, you have to have the spiritual oh. eyes, man. You have to have the spiritual eyes to see it, okay? That's why you have a lot of these, these, these so-called Edomites in these other nations, they actually, they really only date like Jake, they might only date Jake, maybe because in their spirit they feel a connection. You understand that? So I'm not saying that's every case, but that's some case. All right, some cases is like that. Go ahead. God, who has over all God blessed forever. Amen. Yep. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. It's not as though. See, what, what does it mean the word of God taking none effect? We're preaching the word to you. We went through how more scriptures you ever heard come out of a sermon in your life. I'll say that with confidence. Okay, we count the scriptures. Right, we came out with that, but it's not that what we're saying is without effect, because the word of the Lord always goes and does what He wants it to do. Go ahead. Why? For they are not all of Israel, which are of Israel. They are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Like you were saying, you have to be one inwardly. Just because you're an Israelite doesn't mean you're of Israel. Do you get that? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So that's what it means. That's the breakdown. If you're not, if, if just because you're an Israelite, mean you're Israel, because you can't get. I don't believe that. You just said so. You're not an Israel inwardly. You you're one physically, but you're not one inwardly. Okay. So it's not. Well, we're, that's why I'm not worried. Like, I don't believe. Well, that's okay. What does Romans three and three say? I mean, Romans, three Romans three. chapter three. And we read about the judgments coming, right? So those who don't believe, they're going to get those judgments. Go ahead. Yeah. The book of Romans, chapter 3. Yeah, she, she, she's probably an Israelite, man. And verse 3. I believe, she, I believe she's an Israelite. Yeah. And she looks like a so-called white woman. For, Go ahead. The Lord. It says, For what if some did not believe? Right For what if some did not believe? Uh -huh. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Does it mean, just because you don't believe, does that mean the prophecies ain't going to come to pass? God no. forbid. It, God forbid. So it don't, it don't bother us. Because I don't believe in that. That's okay. All right, we'll see. We will see. Yeah, let right. the most high be true, but every man a liar. Let alive. the most high be true, but every man a liar, man. Right. So everything that we're saying is coming out of the book, thus saith the Lord. You know what I mean? Uh, if he's speaking not according to this word, because these pastors, they don't speak according to the word. They speak according to their own heart, and they're all about that money. All right? That's what they're about. They're about that money. Okay? That's why if you don't give them tithes, guess what? <laughs> it's not going to be yeah, It's not going to be going good for you, man. All right? Yeah, they, they, they ain't going to be preaching. <laughs> Isaiah 8 and verse 20 To the law and to the testimony If they speak not according to this word It is because there is no light It's because they don't have light But they think they have light They think the Lord is dealing with them But they don't have no light Because they're not speaking the words coming out of this book That's why when we say something We can say okay go to this, go to that, go to this, go to that Because it's in us When Yahweh spoke, when the Lord spoke He spoke the words coming directly out of his mouth We do that too because it's, it's not our power. It's not about us. That's what people don't get. It's about the Heavenly Father speaking to us. Oh, get yeah, then who he who rejected you, rejected me. And when you were saying you don't believe us, you're saying, I don't believe you, God. I don't believe you, Most High. Talking of belief, yep. what exactly do you guys believe in? If I were to bring it totally brother, here. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. <laughs> what is the message? Because I want to know the suffering. Well, what is the message? Brother. We've been, you've been here for a long time, bro. You've been here longer than all these people. If you don't get it, maybe the Lord is not opening your mind to that. But I'm sincere. I want to know, what is the message? What is the, me the message is this. Mean? Very simple. Very, very get simple. ready for the end. Get ready for the end. That's one of them, right? She, she, she got get that's, ready for that's the end. And that's, it that's, starts that's, that's, now. That's one, that's one, get that's one of them. That's you one have of to get that's ready one for that's the end. That's all there is to it. When you get that, everything's fine. Everywhere. Your soul, your heart, 
your body, your mind, okay, when you get that. Right? The book of Ecclesiastes. Hold on, hold on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and yeah. verse 13. Yeah. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the conclusion. Right? Fear the Most High. Fear the Most High. And if you fear the Most High, it says you'll keep His commandments. And we, we've been telling you the commandments. All right? Dealing with the, going back to the laws of Moses and also the other commandments. Because what is the laws about? Loving your brother as yourself. I told you that already. Loving your brother as yourself and loving the Most High with all thy heart. Really, that's the first one. Loving the Most High with all thy heart, body and soul. So if I get it correctly, to prepare for the end, one has to fear the Most High. Yep. To fear the Most High, to obey His commandments. That's right. Then I have a question for all of you right now. Okay. The of, do you think the better of you here obey the commandments? Absolutely. Do it to the best of our ability. Because if I were to read at the Mosaic law, and then this, hold on, hold on. Let, let me stop you there because I know where, where you might be going. Listen, that doesn't mean we keep everything perfect. It's impossible to keep everything perfect. Then on what basis? Give me Romans 30. On what basis? Give me can Romans 30. Can, uh, can I dispute? What's that? Can I dispute with another person? Because no. I'm, I heard a person may claim that he's obeying the law, and you say spiritual the same thing. On what basis does God can can he distinguish you from the other? Now, how can he distinguish? I'll yeah. show you. Uh, oh, and give me a contract, the sacrifice of the Heavenly Father's a contract. Give me that. All right? Matter of fact, read that. Read, read what you got, brother. This is our uh, Romans 8 and 1. <laughs> there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahweh Shai. We are in Yahweh Shai. We are in the Lord. Go ahead. Who walk not after the flesh, yep. but after the spirit. That's how we can know. That's how we, we tell you spiritual things. You know? For the right. law of the spirit of life in Yahweh Shai has made me free. From the law of sin yes. and death. That's it. All right, but anyways, read that real it's quick. The book of Psalms 51 and verse 17. Yep. The sacrifice of the Most High. This is what the Lord is ultimately looking for. The reason why He punished our people the way He punished them is because what? Because some of them, some of them were keeping the law, but it wasn't about they weren't keeping it with the right spirit in mind. That was the problem. See, the Pharisees. That's why He cursed out the Pharisees. What is the right spirit? Hold on, I'm gonna read it to you, brother. Just, just calm down, man. All right. What were the, uh, what the, the Pharisees, right? They were keeping it with, they were being hypocrites, all right? So they were doing things to be seen of men. They weren't doing it out of the sincerity of their heart. Go ahead, read that, go ahead. The sacrifices of the Most High are a broken spirit, uh -huh. and a, a broken and a contrite heart, right. O what, Most High. What, yeah, go ahead. Thou will not despise. Right, a broken spirit and a contrite, meaning what, you're, 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 you're sorry for what you did. That's what the Lord really uh, cares about. You have to be sorry. When you commit sin, when you go off according to sin, you gotta be sorry. When we commit sin, although we can't keep it perfect, we're, we're sorry about it, man. When we break the Sabbath, we, we're, we're mad about that, okay? When we, when, when we don't, uh, let's, say, let's say if I go to a yeah. restaurant and it has some something that's an abomination according to the scriptures, I'm, I'm gonna get mad. I'll be, yo, well, how can I ask you to not put this in the food? Because that goes back to the commandments as well, all right? But still, that there are people out there who are not the, the Christians. And who do grieve over their sins? And if you so sorry for the past, they, they don't even know what sin is. But that bro. Does, but doesn't mean that they. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. The Christians don't even know what sin is. Tell me what sin is. Sin is the, I'll prove it's the transgression of the law. Oh, that's good. That's very good. I'm glad you know that. They don't know that because they teach you not to keep the law. They say the law is done away with. But they do have an idea. No, no. no. Brother, brother, brother. Let me, let me explain something. Let me show you something. They're not, they don't care about the law. That's why they have bald faces. All right? There's a reason I have a beard on my face. It's not a fashion statement. It's in the law, okay? They don't keep that, they shave it on purpose. They don't have to shave it. They don't put a gun to their head and say, shave your beard. No, they don't care about the law. So what you're doing is you're trying to justify the wicked, which is abomination to the Lord right there. But in the Bible, it's because it's he that does not observe all that is written in the law. Yeah. So by you claiming that right. you are observing no. the law, you're indirectly condemning no. it yourself. What, what you, brother? Read, 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 read uh, Romans 31 and 3. Uh, read 3 and 31. No, no, that's not what it's meaning. That's not what it means. What it means is, hold on. What it means is you're not saved by the law because we can't keep it perfectly. You're saved through Yahweh Shai, okay? But if you're a righteous spirit, you're going to keep the law to the best of your ability because the law is part of loving your brother like yourself. Does that mean you could go commit adultery? No, no, because I don't want to keep none of the law because I'll be condemned. So I'll go commit adultery. No, that's wicked. All right, get me 